Someone has recently made some very public allegations. Okay, I'd like to say some things here. Number one, this is nothing but damage control. Number two, he knew everything, and there's proof of that. He knew what his Uncle Lloyd Goodwin was doing. He knew what Lee Ray was doing, and he covered it up. He threatened people to keep their mouths shut. Well, evidently, I don't even know at this point who it was that came out. Someone just sent me this video. But I can guarantee you, this is nothing but damage control. And he knows good and well exactly what his Uncle Lloyd Goodwin did to women and young girls. He knew what Lee Ray was doing to women and young children. Not just girls, but boys too. And he's covered it up for years. The church paid for his education to become a constitutional attorney so that he could cover his uncle's rear end. That's a fact, Jack. That's all I'm going to say right now. Someone has recently made some very public allegations that she was molested as a child 35 to 40 years ago in this church. She is alleging that Brother Lloyd Goodwin engaged in sexual activity when she was a minor. Um, she's wanting this to be very, very public. And if it's true, it's horrible. If it's true, it's a terrible sin. If it's true, I condemn it wholeheartedly. It's hard to, well, I won't even say that. I'll just say that Lloyd Goodwin has been dead for 25 years now. And if these things are true, then he'll have to face God and the judgment over it. But I feel I have to say this because it's been said that we're hiding this, that we're sweeping this under the rug, that we're not doing anything about it. I don't know what I can do about something that happened 40 years ago. If it happens today, I guarantee you, bless God, I will deal with it. But we are not sweeping allegations under the rug. I'm stating this to this congregation publicly, and we're live streaming this globally. We're not hiding from the claims. There has not been any kind of cover-up. If this was happening 40 years ago, I was in the church, but I certainly didn't know anything about it. If it was happening, I did not know. If I had have known, I would have done something because I have a moral obligation as a child of God and I was a practicing attorney, which made me an officer of the court. I have a legal duty to report child abuse if I know about it. But I had nothing, I knew nothing that would lead me to think that any type of, of abuse of children was occurring. But I believe it's important for you to know not only that the claims were being made over misconduct decades ago, but I want you to know that nothing like that is happening in this church now. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I guarantee you, I have never been unfaithful to my wife. Not one time. I have never molested a child. Although sometimes the spankings I gave my children, no, that's, I don't want to get into that, was not molestation. I have never done that. Try to be extremely careful. I will not meet with any sister privately. If a 
sister comes into my office to talk to me, you're welcome to come talk to me, but the door will stay open. Unless my wife or someone else is present, I will not do that. I don't want, I want to avoid the very appearance of evil. I will not tolerate child abuse. It will be reported if it ever happens. We don't tolerate sexual immorality in this church. Some didn't like it, some disagreed with the way things were handled, but we took positive steps to end immorality involving adults as soon as we found out about it. We would have done even more if children had been involved. Years ago, our church adopted a child abuse prevention policy. Our trustees adopted this. It's our church policy. We posted it. I'm going to post it again so that people can see it. But I'm going to take the time, sorry to keep you, but I'm going to take the time to read this is our official church policy and has been for years. This written policy is a restatement of the long-held belief and practice of the Gospel Assembly Church. We believe and teach that child abuse is sin. It will not be tolerated in the church. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 5, Whosoever, whoso shall receive one such child in my name receiveth me. Children are an integral part of the church of today and represent the future of the church. Our Lord also said, but whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. That's verse 6. Our faith requires us to offer both hospitality and protection to children. They are to be protected from physical and sexual ex abuse and exploitation. The Congregation of Gospel Assembly Church is committed to providing a safe and secure environment for all children, youth, and persons of all ages who participate in the services and activities offered by the church. This policy reflects our congregation's commitment to preserving the church as a holy place of safety and protection for all who enter and a place where all can experience the love of God through relationships with his servants. The purpose, our congregation's purpose for establishing this child abuse prevention policy is to demonstrate our absolute and unwavering commitment to the physical safety and spiritual growth of all of our children. Because of this stated purpose, and because tragic incidents have occurred in Christian churches and denominations, we openly declare our promise to conduct our ministry in ways that assure the safety and spiritual growth of all of our children and youth. We will be guided by these principles. All incidents of physical or sexual abuse of children that we become aware of will be promptly reported to law enforcement or other appropriate governmental agencies. Those persons who are mandatory reporters of child abuse, all of the nurses in our assembly and others who may be mandatory reporters, those persons who are mandatory reporters of child abuse under state law are encouraged to be aware of their legal duty. This church pledges not to interfere with any reporting of child abuse. We will follow reasonable procedures and safety measures in the selection and recruitment of church employees and volunteer staff. No adult who's been convicted of child abuse, either physical abuse or sexual abuse, will be allowed to work directly with children and youth in any church-sponsored activity. Adults who have survived abuse as a child are in need of the love and support of our congregation. Any such adult supervisor of child 
pardon me, any such adult survivor of child abuse who desires to work with children or youth in church-sponsored activities is encouraged to discuss this with the pastor or the elders. All adult employees or volunteers involved with children in our nursery, school, or other church-sponsored activity must have been members of the congregation in regular attendance for a minimum of six months before being accepted for such involvement. Adult employees or volunteers shall immediately report to the pastor or elders any behavior that seems to them to be abusive or inappropriate. The pastor or elder will investigate any report using biblical principles. If there is evidence of possible abuse, in addition to reporting to proper authorities, the employee or volunteer will be immediately suspended from any activity which involves direct contact with children or youth until the matter is satisfactorily resolved. Because of the legal principle of innocence until proven guilty, and because of biblical injunctions against slander and gossip, we will not make public pronouncements about investigations, unproven allegations, etc. However, we reserve the right to inform those who need to know to prevent possible further abuse. And we reserve the right to follow the principles of Matthew 18, 15 through 18 in administering church discipline. In all of our ministries with children and youth, the Gospel Assembly Church is committed to demonstrating the love of Jesus Christ so that each child will be surrounded by steadfast love, be built up in the faith, and be led in the paths of righteousness. If any leaders in the past failed, well then our faith never was in human leaders. Our faith was in Jesus Christ. Our faith today is in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so, if that occurred, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't do it, didn't know about it. If it didn't occur, that's another matter. God knows. I don't know, it's hard to determine what happened 35 years ago particularly when the person who is the perpetrator or alleged perpetrator has been dead for 25 years and can't present his side of the case, if there's a side to be presented. I don't know. I neither, uh, neither accept nor reject the claims because I just don't know. All I'm saying is if they're true, they're awful. And we don't do that. That is not what this church stands for. That is not what this church proclaims. I love our little children. I want to see them grow up strong, committed Christians with a vision of what the future holds for the body of Christ in a world that's getting dark and dim. There still needs to be some lights that shine. There still needs to be a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. There still needs to be the light shining in the lives of men and women who've grown up committed to serving the Lord with a real vision of his calling in their life. So I had to say these things because public claims have been made and I don't want anyone to say we are ignoring or sweeping things under the rug said what I said. If you have questions, concerns, feel free to come and talk to me about them. Um, I will be glad, be very willing to talk to you about any of these um, claims that have been made or any questions that you may have. I just don't want a whole lot of talk, 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 slander, gossip type things being said. I think if you want to know, come tell me. Come talk to me. I'll tell you anything I know. So that's what I've said. I'd like to close our service with prayer. I want to ask you to pray for anyone who feels like they've been taken advantage of by someone who 
ought to have protected them. Whether they're in the church or out of the church, there's a lot of wounded people in the world. A lot of people who feel that they've been taken advantage of, they've been harmed. And uh, someone has recently made some very public allegations that she was molested as a child 35 to 40 years ago in this church. She is alleging that Brother Lloyd Goodwin engaged in sexual activity when she was a minor. Um, she's wanting this to be very, very public. And if it's true, it's horrible. If it's true, it's a terrible sin. If it's true, I condemn it wholeheartedly. It's hard to, well, I won't even say that. I'll just say that Lloyd Goodwin has been dead for 25 years now. And if these things are true, then he'll have to face God and the judgment over it. But I feel I have to say this because it's been said that we're hiding this, that we're sweeping this under the rug, that we're not doing anything about it. I don't know what I can do about something that happened 40 years ago. If it happens today, I guarantee you, bless God, I will deal with it. <laughs> but we are not sweeping allegations under the rug. I'm stating this to this congregation publicly, and we're live streaming this globally. We're not hiding from the claims. There has not been any kind of cover-up. If this was happening 40 years ago, I was in the church, but I certainly didn't know anything about it. If it was happening, I did not know. If I had have known, I would have done something because I have a moral obligation as a child of God and I was a practicing attorney, which made me an officer of the court. I have a legal duty to report child abuse if I know about it. But I had nothing, I knew nothing that would lead me to think that any type of, of abuse of children was occurring. But I believe it's important for you to know not only that the claims are being made over misconduct decades ago, I want you to know that nothing like that's happening in this church now.